Welcome back, everybody. Joining us tonight is the mayor of Boston, Marty Walsh. Thank you so much for coming in. It's been a long time. It yes, has it, been. too long. It's too always long. good to Glad see. You. So we're the day after Election Day here in America. First off, your reaction to the midterms. Well, I'm glad that the Democrats uh, won back the House uh, to have a little balance here uh, in, in all of the things that aren't happening in Washington, and hopefully now we can push some some legislation forward. Somebody asked me this morning what I thought was important. I said transportation, education, funding. I think if, if you really can get to an immigration uh, reform type of package to deal with immigration and, and also DACA, those are things that we can get done now, and, and there won't be any excuses. Let's talk specifically about what it means for the city of Boston, because as you talk about the Democrats retaking control of the House, that means Representative Jim McGovern of Worcester becomes chairman of the Rules Committee. Representative Richard Neal becomes chairman of Ways and Means. Spoke to the boat last night. I'm sure you did. <laughs> so, you know, what are you hoping they might be able to that's, help that, out that's with? That's really incredible. I, in I mean, you know, we haven't had that type of clout or, or, or leadership, uh, that high level leadership in Congress since Tip O'Neill, mm -hmm. uh, Joe Moakley, and, and Ted Kennedy. And, and that's no disrespect to the folks that are there now. They're working hard, but they have they have the, the senior and they have the ability now to, to lead these lead these 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 uh, different committees and move them forward. And uh, I was watching one of the the news outlets last night talking about um, Richie Neal. How about how he's a gentleman? He works across the aisle. Uh, everyone likes him, and that's important to have somebody uh, in that role that actually will work with other people. And it is about working with Democrats mm -hmm. and Republicans. Listen, I'm a Democrat, but to move the country forward uh, and to move the state forward, you, you have you have the election. You battle each other out. You, you, you do what you have to do to get elected. Now you're elected. Now you have now it's the pot that you have to work together let's get to boston's climate readiness plan you released this a few weeks ago it's an update on a plan that you've been working on for a few years now this is a plan to prepare for flooding that we're going to see in boston sea level rise stronger storms all of this it calls for a bunch of different stuff retractable sea walls lifting up parts of the coastline you probably aren't going to get it all done if you could do three things on your list. What's your wish list of three things to do to get Boston ready for some of the effects of climate change? Great question. I, I think Four Point Channel, Moakley Park in South Boston, that is the, the, if we can prevent sea level rise from affecting, those affect the biggest parts mm -hmm. of our city. They affect the financial districts, the Chinatowns, the South Ends, the, the, the Lower Roxburys, the Dorchesters and Southeast, saving thousands and thousands of homes and the ability to really protect assets in, in our city and protect our areas of, of, of mm -hmm. job, jobs, where jobs are. Those are the areas that we really have to start really putting the investment in first. And in terms of financing it back to the delegation, you've got that money in your budget. How much are you hoping the federal government might kick in? Well, we don't know long term. I didn't put a price tag with long term because it's a, it's a probably it's a, it's a probably a, over a decade period of time. Mm -hmm. But one thing we we do have is a ten million dollar request for FEMA grants to begin the the processing of the of the planning of the Four Point Channel area. Uh, so that's key. So right now, having a ten million dollar investment from FEMA uh, is important. And then the plan, putting the plan together. Somebody was in my office the other day from C40 uh, and they, they, they were talking about the plan they said it's probably one of the best if not the best plan they've ever seen in the United States of mm. America if not the world mm. on planning out resiliency and a lot of work has been done in this area so we're not starting we're not starting uh, you know on first base we're starting already into the game we're already we're already further down the field or in the base whatever the analogy is um, that we want to use um, to, to really make a difference according to reports this week from the Wall Street Journal and others it looks as though Boston is out of the running for the Amazon second headquarters. How disappointed are you about that, if that's true, and do you know that to be true? Well, I don't know it to be true, because I called John Barros today, and I asked him, have we heard anything from Amazon, just because I've been reading in the Wall Street Journal and blogs and, and, and all tweets and everything else coming down, <laughs> and we haven't heard anything. Um, you know, we have uh, a 1,000 employees right now of Amazon working in the city. Mm -hmm. uh, we have another 2,000 coming where the development is being built in South Boston. Uh, I think Boston is a, a great world-class city. I think it would be a perfect setting, a home for, for HQ2, for Amazon. Um, um, you know, I, I think that, you know, if we don't get it, and I said it from the beginning, uh, I'm not going to be necessarily disappointed because we've added 20,000 new jobs a year for the last five years. And, you know, people want to be in the city. And if we get it, we'll, we'll be prepared for it. One of the things we have to think about with uh, the potential for an Amazon HQ2 is housing. Yeah. There was a report out last month showing that a lot of Boston's luxury housing is being bought up by LLCs and yeah. shell corporations not even necessarily people who live here, and that that's driving up costs. 
Are you concerned about that? Is that what you're seeing in the numbers as well? And what do we do about it? My, my, my concern about that is, is, and I was asked the question right off the bat, you know, what do I think about this? You know, these apartments are sitting empty and these units are sitting empty. Mm -hmm. My concern is that the, these units are being sold to uh, people from international companies coming into our city. And I, I would love to see them call Boston their home. And I'd love to see them being invested here philanthropically, uh, themselves personally and through their companies. Um, that's what my concern is. I, I don't want to see us to become this building all this high end housing and having these apartments empty at the top of mm -hmm. Boston. I think that it's important to, to have people living in the city of Boston. And, um, you know, um, they do pay a large amount of taxes, uh, those folks already, because they're paying extremely high prices. For, they're paying a property tax and a real estate tax. Sure. Um, so, you know, my concern is that they, they don't, they're not calling here home. And, and I think that it's important from that, that, that if they're going to buy a house here, you, you want them to be vested here. In the is city. there a way that, if, from the standpoint of the city, that you can force them to disclose their names or some people are talking about they should pay, we should pay a higher tax rate and things like that and mm -hmm. i'm not quite necessarily sure if that's the answer i just think that we have to we have to continue uh, to do what we're doing as far as building housing in the city not just the high-end housing we need affordable low-income housing and then i just do transportation but that's a conversation that's a for issue. another interview <laughs> yeah. for the next time boston mayor marty walsh it's always great having you thank i you. appreciate it thank you, thank so, you much. so much thank thanks you. for being here thank and we're going to check weather with eric